few videos back, I explored the free McBoot mod for the PlayStation 2. Check it out for a more in-depth explanation, but simplified, it's a soft mod that only requires an exploited memory card to be inserted. With that installed, you can emulate older consoles and play burnt PS2 games. Interestingly, you can also load PS2 ISO files from flash drives plugged into the front ports. These ports are version 1.1 of USB from 1998, however, and process information quite slowly. This can cause issues in some games when it comes to bandwidth demanding portions like the cutscenes. If you own a fat model PS2 of an expansion bay, however, Free McBoot also supports ISOs played off a hard drive. These transfer data at a much higher speed and are a great alternative to USB if you don't want to burn DVDs. Check out the Free McBoot video if you need more information on that, but today we're delving into the world of the hard drive enabled PS2. You can't just simply throw a hard drive into the PS2 and start playing Are You Smarter Than a Fifth Grader, however, there are prerequisites. First, we'll need this thing. Well, you'll probably need this thing. This is not an official accessory. You won't find the Sony logo printed anywhere. This is a more modern version of an official hard drive and network adapter from 2001. Those included an Ethernet port for network connectivity and support for ATA hard drives, as was the style at the time. This is 2022 though. The games might be 20 years old, but that doesn't mean that the hard drive they boot off has to be as well. These GameStar branded ones, or whatever brand they might slap on them, I'm pretty sure they're all the same model from China, support SATA drives, which are much more modern and readily available. They support both 2.5 and 3.5 inch drives, but be warned, there are some caveats. For one, these only support drives up to 2 terabytes. That probably won't be an issue, but note that the network port on these are actually completely fake. I'm not sure of the explanation for that, but you'll need to track down an official original if you want that functionality. Besides the hard drive, the last item you'll need is a way to interface said hard drive with a Windows computer. I recommend a USB adapter like this for convenient file transfer. If your PC can handle it, go with one that uses a USB 3 or C type connector. This way you won't have to wait too long for Jackass the game to transfer across. None of this is possible without a hard drive of course. Most guides for installing one will refer to a horribly outdated and disorganised compatibility list. Now, I'm sure this would have been useful in 2006 when it was last updated, but I instead decided to try my luck with this 500GB mystery drive I found in a box. Where did it come from? I cannot recall, but this made it all the more enticing as a candidate. Spoiler, it totally worked. While I can't guarantee every drive in the world will work, it shows you don't need to treat that list like gospel and find a used drive online somewhere. Using the USB SATA adapter, it's easily interfaced with my PC. Head to the disk management program in Windows. This can easily be accessed in Windows 10 by right clicking the start icon. Here, we can see that the mystery drive does have partitions on it, albeit ones that aren't recognised by Windows. Who knows what I salvaged this from? But I'm bored of the mystery now. Let's nuke those by right clicking and deleting the volumes. We need a drive that's completely unallocated for this project to work. But warning! Doing so will completely delete everything on the drive. So make sure you select the right drive that doesn't have irreplaceable files on it. It will delete everything and cannot be undone. I hope I'm being very clear here. I've uploaded guides before that involved formatting drives and have later received idiotic comments about losing files when I've specifically explained what formatting is. So pay attention. Once the drive has been restored to an unallocated state, it's time to download and install a program called WinHIP. This is used to transfer the game ISO files to the hard drive in a format that's PS2 friendly. A download link can be found in the description. WinHIP does have a limitation as it only supports 255 games on a single drive, but there is a workaround linked on its website if you somehow need more games simultaneously than that. Once it's installed, be sure to run the program as an administrator. Before anything else, head to the options menu. Here, choose 48-bit HD loader in the override application mode section if you have a drive that is bigger than 128 gigabytes. Additionally, make sure the enable patch HDL's extended compatibility modes checkbox is selected. Press OK. Next, head to the select drive menu. Again, be sure to select the correct intended drive. I personally had to do a double take since I have another drive that is also 500 gigabytes. I didn't want to select the wrong one and lose all my memes. There will be an error message about a master boot record, but that's fine. Press OK. Now, press the format drive button. 
In the Format section under Application, make sure HD Loader 48-bit is selected if you have an applicable hard drive. Everything else should be sweet, so select OK. There will be a warning message about formatting, just like I did before, and then another. If you still complain at this point about unwittingly losing files, you need to take a long, deep look in the mirror and discover yourself, man. A hot minute later, depending on how large the drive is, the formatting will be complete. There will be a pop-up message about HDL. I'm not exactly sure what it's referring to, but if you do, heed its message well. Now, we can add game ISOs. Select Add Images. In the window that appears, press the Add Images button and navigate to whatever pirate den you store them in. In this example, I only chose one as a test, but later on I added 17 simultaneously without any issue. Once the files have been selected, press Start and once it's done, it's done. It didn't take long at all using my USB 3 SATA adapter. It's now time to disconnect the hard drive from your computer and install it into the PS2. Here's my unit, which needs a right dusting. I'm going to go step outside for a minute. Connecting the drive to the adapter is simple. It should clip right on. The same goes for installing the adapter with a hard drive attached into the PS2. The other connector on the adapter lines up with the socket on the PS2, and the two screws secure the adapter into position. Once the PlayStation is ready to go, launch Free McBoot and an app called OPL. The games on the hard drive might not list straight away, so press the start button to navigate to the menu. Select settings and scroll down to the last third portion of the options. Choose auto for HDD device start mode. This will ensure the list populates every time you start OPL. Additionally, you can select HDD games on the default menu so it always shows first. Go back a menu with the circle button and select save changes. Now you should be all set. Simply select a game to play and you're ready for a comfortable Saturday night in. You can also add cover artwork if you wish, but that's possibly a tutorial for another day. Otherwise, there isn't much else to say. There's some hardware that's necessary and a single freeware program to download and use, but installing a hard drive into a PS2 is a very simple mod in the modern day. It certainly ticked a box off my bucket list. Until next time though, thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the flip side.